Hi guys, I'm a Forrester here with another fountain pen review. Now the pen that I'll be reviewing today has an identity crisis of sorts. It's the Platinum 3776 Custom. It's in black and it has gold trim. Now it looks conservative and fairly straightforward, so why the identity crisis? Well, it's widely touted as an entry level to premium pens with a 14 karat gold nib and innovative features like slip and seal technology. But is it an entry level premium pen or an overpriced mid-range pen? Let's go to the tabletop and take a closer look. Okay guys, here we are at the tabletop. This is the packaging that the 3776 came in. It has a pretty standard cardboard outer sleeve and then a thicker, more substantial cardboard inner case. Inside, the pen rests on its bed. It's a good looking pen. It came with an ink cartridge, a user's manual, although this is in Japanese and I can't read it, and a warranty card, which I'll probably never use. Now, I wish that it had come with a converter for the price that they charged, but it didn't, so I ordered a converter separately. Now, I've told the story of how I bought this pen, but I'll give you the short version in this video. You know, I watched plenty of videos about the 3776, and everybody described it as an entry-level gold nib pen. But almost everybody recommends buying it directly from Japan instead of from U.S. pen merchants. Now, here in the U.S., you can find it everywhere for $176 for this particular pen. But I found it for $77 in Japan, including shipping. Now, I ordered it from Japan, but the order was canceled after months of waiting. I ordered it again in a different configuration, this right here, black with a medium nib at a higher price, $120. It was from a Japanese merchant, but it was most likely warehoused in the U.S. by Amazon because it came within one week. When I took it out and held it for the very first time, I was surprised at how light it felt. Now, it's a smaller pen than others that I'm used to, like this Pilot Custom 823, and the resin that it's made of feels less substantial. But to be honest, it just felt cheap, and this surprised me. Other reviewers hint about this, but they don't come right out and say it. Well, I decided to insert the ink cartridge and use it up before using the converter. And this led to my second negative impression of the pen. For some reason, it was a very hard starter and the ink just wouldn't flow. After working with it for 10 minutes or so, I ended up standing it up with the nib pointed down and walking away from it. An hour or so later, it did decide to write, and I haven't had a problem with ink flow since. But my initial impressions of this pen just were not good. Now this is a basic cigar-shaped pen. It's tapered along the entire length of the cap and the barrel, and it's rounded on the ends. More of a blunt end on the cap end, and more tapered on the other end. Now did you hear that noise? That's another annoying feature of this pen and possibly the reason for the problem with the ink flow because there's a ball bearing inside the ink cartridge and you can hear it as it slides back and forth. I think its purpose is to ensure that the ink doesn't adhere to the walls of the cartridge, but I honestly think it's the source of the poor ink flow by sealing off the uh, cartridge opening. At least that's my theory. Now, I really like Platinum's clip design. I think it looks very classic. I'll try to give you a good look at it. The pen also has some nice accent points with small gold colored bands on either end and then one right in the center above the cap band. The cap band says Platinum, made in Japan, and number 3776, which I'll talk about in a second. Now the cap unscrews in one and three-quarter turns, which is a little bit more than I like. Let's look in more detail at the section. There's a small step down and the threads are very comfortable. Here's another accent point, which I think is a nice touch with this small gold-colored band. And then the section is a little bit too narrow for my taste, but it does have a lip at the end, which aids in the grip. Let's look at the 
nib in particular. It says 3776 at the top, then the Platinum P logo, 14 karat, and this is a medium nib. Now, it's fairly plain, nothing too showy, and it's a very flat nib. That's something that a lot of people notice. Now, like the Mont Blanc 149, the height of a famous mountain is the model number, 3776. Mount Fuji is Japan's most recognizable landmark, and the peak of it is 3,776 meters tall. You know, the climb is so popular at Mount Fuji that there's a post office at the top. Let's go to Google Earth and take a look at the view from the top of Mount Fuji. Okay, we're looking at a section of the island of Japan, and for reference right here where the cursor is is Tokyo, and southwest of Tokyo is Mount Fuji right here. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at the volcano named Mount Fuji. Okay, we'll put it in the center there get in fairly close. Now there's a path that goes all the way around it. I'll highlight the street view and there you can see the path pop up and I'm going to go to right there. All right, there we are and there's two people hiking on the path. The path goes all the way around. You can see it going around the craters and there's two craters. One is here and the other crater, the main crater, is right here. Now there's a lot of buildings on the back side of this ridge over here. And then we go on around and you can look at some of the view in the distance. Here's some more buildings. And then the path goes up and I think the highest point is probably right up here. This is probably a weather station and uh, a lot of people congregate up in that area also. But it's a beautiful mountain from a distance. Look it up. I think you'd enjoy seeing it. Now as I cap the pen, it first makes contact with the internal slip and seal feature right there and then one quarter turn more seals it against the pressure of an internal spring in the end of the cap. Now as advertised, this feature keeps the nib from drying out and having hard starts. And I found that it works very well. Now I want to give you some size comparison to these other two pens. First of all to the Pilot Metropolitan that a lot of you are familiar with. And the Metropolitan I think is actually a little bit longer but it's probably a little narrower than the uh, 3776. Here's one I've already compared it to and this is the Pilot Custom 823 which is a longer pen. It's a bigger pen all around. And here's a size comparison of the three pens uncapped with the 3776 in the middle. It has a larger nib than the Pilot Metropolitan but it's smaller overall and it's much smaller than the 823. And now for the writing sample. Now, I generally don't like posting my pens, but this one is so small for my hand that I think I actually write better with it if it's posted. So I'll do it that way. Now this is the Platinum. Thirty-seven seventy-six Custom. It has a medium nib and it's 14 karat gold. Okay, the ink that I'm using is just the standard platinum ink cartridge that came with it. Let me do a little bit of doodling. You might hear some feedback if I get quiet. The microphone is on me, not on the table. I originally wanted a fine nib. This is medium, but I think I like it maybe better. Alright, and I wanted to look for a quote that talked about the identity crisis that I see in this pen, and here's what I found.
that was said by President Ronald Reagan in 1985. So Marines don't have an identity crisis, but this pen might. Now I've given you my honest opinion of this Platinum 3776. Comment below whether you think it's an entry level premium pen or an overpriced medium level pen. I can't recommend this pen if you buy it at an American pen re retailer. There's just too many other pens that are better that are at that same price range. But if you can get one for less, I say go for it. It's been a dependable writer for me. I'll put a link below where you can order one at a reasonable price. Y'all take care.